welcome back to the Firefly Studio. It's Gina. Um, today I've been working on these fabric postcards and a lot of people have shown interest in them so I thought I'd do a tutorial. It's really really quick. <clears throat> I love them. I think they're just so nice to um, to put in junk journals or to pop into a card and send to somebody. Um, they're just really really sweet. I'll give you a close-up um, and then on the back I've stamped that image. So um, today I'll go through the process but we are going to mix it up just a little bit but <clears throat> it's the same um, you're going to create it the same it's just I'm going to tweak it slightly um, on here. Okay first thing you're going to need is some batting and you're going to need some muslin or any kind of cotton fabric. Um, these would be really pretty um, with the front stamped on the muslin and then have the back as like a calico print, I think. But I don't have any um, really pretty floral fabrics, so this is the way I've been doing it. So you, what, you, what I need you guys to do, I'm not going to do this because I've already cut it ahead of time. The measurements are 4 inches by 5 and a half inch for your muslin or fabric, depending on what you guys are going to do because everybody can take this and tweak it as, as they want. Um, and then the batting... I would cut the batting at three and three quarters by five and a quarter inch. Okay, so this is what you're going to end up with. And we are going to do a bit of stamping now. I thought I would do the stamping on here so you guys can see it because I know there's a lot of people really concerned about this stamping. Um, it's really simple. Um, get a piece of paper here. Okay, now the stamps I've got, you know, you're going to have to look around and find, the, find these stamps, guys. I can tell you where I bought mine, but if they don't have them, I'm, I don't know. Um, this, I bought it Hobby Lobby. It's a Stampendous so there you go, you can see that. So if you can't find it at Hobby Lobby, do a search. I'm sure somebody on Amazon's going to sell that. And then this one is True Friends. Again, I bought this at Hobby Lobby, but you don't have to use this. I just think it's really nice if you're going to ship these out to somebody, a good friend, or it just looks really sweet on the back. Now, I won't be stamping this image today because... I've decided to tweak this and I'm going to put a pocket, a paper pocket on the back so that we could add a tag. Um, I thought that would be a really, really cute thing to add to our journals. So, what we're going to do, let me get my, stamp, my ink here. This is the ink I use. Um, I, I can't recommend anything else. You'll have to if you don't want to use this, you'll have to do a search because this is all I've ever used. I'm sure there's other inks out there, but um, just look for something that's going to be fine on um, fabric. You don't want to use a water-based ink. So get your uh, stamp inked up really good. And honestly, guys, it's no different to stamping on... Um, paper. So just center that and then give it a good press down and there you go. Beautiful, isn't it? So simple, but oh my gosh, these are just so beautiful. And what's really nice about them, it doesn't use up a lot of your um, really, you know, like these. I've got really delicate, these are expensive laces I picked up, and you don't have to have much, and it just really is a beautiful, 
little project. Um, you guys will love it. You'll be so addicted to making these. So, <clears throat> all right, so I've got the front stamped. Now, if you were going to make these as I made them to ship out or give to people, these can go in journals as well. I, I do that as well, but go ahead and stamp. You can stamp something on the back, or you can leave it plain. Like I said, it'd be nice to have just a, a floral um, patterned um, material for the back as well. I think that would be super, super pretty. But today, I want to do this slightly different because I want to add this pocket. So what I'm going to do, I, I can't move the camera over there, and I'm so sorry for that, guys, because I know you'd love to see me stitch this, but I, I can't. So what you want to do now, I stitch my batting to the front first, and I do, I do just around the image. I do a straight stitch, and then you'll want to come back and add... I got a bit of lace here, um, just so you can see. I always put a little, a little bit of lace on this side, and then you're going to need a very small image. I don't remember where I bought these, but it's easy enough for you guys to find. Just some little simple, you know, image that you could um, stitch to that. Do all of this before you stitch the back to it. So. Let me do this step. I'll come back, talk you back through it again, and then we'll finish this off. Okay, guys, I have been to the machine, and I've done a straight stitch around there so that the batting is now stitched to the muslin. I then came back and stitched my whatever trim you're going to want to use because you want that held down. I, I would do that rather than gluing it. And then take your little your image, whatever you choose to use, and just stitch around that. Now you're ready to add the back. Well, I have went ahead and I told you guys I wanted to tweak this one because I know uh, inside the journal I thought how sweet to make that into a pocket that we can put a little tag in. So. I've already stitched that so you can see and now I'm just going to then need to go back to the machine and you get those lined up and then we're just going to stitch all the way around again and I'll be back and you can see the finished um, postcard. Okay guys I'm back we're just going to do another recap you're going to need some batting, some cotton fabric, a stamp if you want to do an image like this, and then you're going to need some sort of little digital design, a bit of trim, and now you can see what it looks like. I love the little pocket. I think this is perfect. This is just what it needed for the um, junk journal. The only thing I'm going to do is I, I'd like to have just a little bit more bling to the front. So I've cut out one of these. And this I'm just going to glue because um, this will be fine with just a bit of glue there. So I'm really, really happy with how that's come out. I think that is pretty. The reason I didn't put this down before I stitched it is because um, if you've worked with any of this, it'll get caught up in the foot of your um, sewing machine and it'll pull those little pearls and things off. So yeah, that just shows you the difference. Um, and I love both equally. But what, um, what a nice addition to the... Um, to the journals I think because you can get that fabric inside and I know some people were saying oh I'd really like to know how to use fabric more inside a journal and this is one great way to do it. Um, so I just want to say on that note guys I have added some of these to my shop. Um, I've got 
three sets of these for sale that went into my uh, shop this morning. And the other thing I've added to the shop is this Raggedy Ann fabric that I've came across. Um, I'm selling it by the half a meter, so it measures 18 inches by 44. It's a big piece, as you can see. You could get, um, depending on the size journal, you should be able to get at least six journals and possibly eight out of that piece of material. Um, I just think it's adorable. Unfortunately, I um, don't have my Raggedy Ann books anymore. I ended up selling those because I didn't know that I would ever get around to uh, creating. But how cute would that be um, with some of the Raggedy Ann um, book pages? But I don't have any of those, unfortunately. So that's in my shop as well. I've only got six of these to go around. So if you guys are interested in those or the postcards, I'll leave the link below. I hope this has been helpful to you. It is so easy. You guys, um, you know, you'll, you'll enjoy it when you get started playing with these things. So give it a try, and I'll be back soon with more, more tutorials. Bye.